Right, Heinemann Hire. Chapter 6 on differentiation, mixed exercise 6s at the end, the optimization part. Question 21. There's a rectangular block with a square base of side x. It tells you the surface area and it says show that the volume is given by this expression here. Right, so what I'll do is I'll put v of x equals that. Now if there's another dimension required, I'll have to call that h. Then I'll have to think now. From this, I should be able to get an expression involving x's and h's to equate to the area. Well, what have I got there? The base is made up of two parts. It's got a base, which is just a square x by x, and it's got a side, which is also a rectangle, only x by h, which means the total surface area should be, I've got two of the base, so that's 2x squared, and I've got four sides, so plus 4xh. So that thing then, so 2x squared plus 4xh should equal 150. Now that gives me an equation that I can rearrange to get h. Because to get the volume, I know that the volume is given by length times breadth times height, x squared h. But if I want it just in terms of x, I'll need to replace this h. So here's an equation that I can use to generate h in terms of x's. So I've got 4xh would be 150 minus 2x squared. Oops, that's going to be a bit messy. So finally, h would be take the 4x across and divide. So 150 over the 4x minus 2x squared over the 4x. Well, what's that? That's 75 over the 2x, just dividing by 2. And that's just going to be x upon 2, cancelling the 2 and cancelling the x's. There's an expression that I can now substitute into that. So I'll call that two, because I want to call that one. So now what I'm going to do is substitute two and one. I should have said that. Substitute two in one. So instead of h, I write this. 75 upon two x minus x upon two. Multiplying it out, I've got 75 upon two. The x will cancel out one of them, leaving an x. Minus coefficient of half x cubed, which is the same thing as that, only with a half taken out. Will I have to go as far as that? Alright, take out the fraction. 75x minus x cubed. There it is then. So that's the first bit. Now that's not really anything to do with the higher. That's just purely algebraic, just by using areas and volumes of a cuboid. B. What's the dimensions that maximise? So it's an optimization. that means I want the derivative. Right, so v dash of x, I'll go to this one here, would be 75 upon 2, being the coefficient of the linear term, minus 3 upon 2 x squared. And I know I'm going to have an optimum. You'll get an optimum value if this derivative, if the rate of change of the answers, is ever zero. Otherwise it just goes on forever, either up or down. You'll only get an optimum value if it's stationary somewhere. So I'll put this part here to equal zero which means that 75 upon 2 minus 3x squared should equal 0. I'll forget the 2's, double everything. That means that 3x squared should equal 75. You can see the answer materialising. should equal 25. So the x should be the square root of 25, which is plus or minus 5, which is just 5, but not the negative, because I know that x has to be greater than 0. So I'll put that down. So something happens when x is 5. But maybe I should really justify whether it's a maximum or a minimum that happens when x is 5. Now that's where the second derivative might be a bit handier than the table because of these awkward bits of arithmetic here. Because if the first derivative is this, then the second derivative, which is the rate of change of the gradients, the rate of change of the rate of change of the answers, would simply be negative 3x. So that at x equals 5, that means this derivative is going to be negative 15, which is quite clearly negative, so it's a maximum. v double dashed of 5 is less than 0, which means you've got a maximum value. I was about to say turning point there. So you get a maximum value at x equals 5. Now, this part B actually says what's the dimensions of the block that maximise the volume. And part C says what's the maximum volume. Well, that was x. That was the expression for h in there. So that means that at x equals 5, h is going to be 75 over 2 times 5 minus the 5 up in 2. So 5 into that goes 15. 
So you've got 15 upon 2 minus 5 upon 2, which is 10 upon 2, which is 5. There it is. So we've got a maximum volume when the length, the breadth and the height are all 5. In other words, when it's a cube. And part C then says, now, what is that maximum volume? Well, the maximum volume is the volume when x is 5. But I think I'll just go back to the original one because I've got x squared h here. So that's just going to be 5 squared times 5, which is 125 centimetres cubed maximum volume.